you know, given towards issues that affect children. Tonight, on this program, we try to look at plans as well as uh, programs that political parties, civil society organizations, as well as non-governmental organizations have uh, towards uh, children. We are in an election year. Come 12th of August, Zambians will be casting their votes. My name is Kelvin Dabola Chifokolu. My guest on the program is a country director of uh, Regional Psychosocial Support Initiative, REPS in short. His name is Kelvin Ngoma. Mr. Ngoma, good evening and welcome uh, to the program. Thank you very much, Kelvin, and uh, good evening, viewers. Like I've stated in my preamble, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ngoma, let's start. You are coming from an organization that is championing issues to do with psychosocial support and um, you deal with children. What are the trends in planning for children well-being in Zambia? Like I've mentioned, very little is being mentioned or mm. uh, talked about in, in regards to the programs that polit various political parties have uh, towards uh, children, but they will only talk about empowerment. We have seen women being empowered. Yeah. We have seen youths being empowered, but very little attention is given to children in this country. Now, what are the trends in planning for children well-being in Zambia? Thank you very much, Kelvin. Uh, in terms of planning for, for children, we have seen uh, some plans in, you know, here and there. We have seen uh, initiatives that have been introduced. We have seen some of the laws that have been passed that uh, you know, uh, deal with children. However, a lot more still need you know, uh, remain in, in, uh, uh, to be done. We have had some of the, the bills that we had hoped years before to be passed, but up to date, you know, like the child, you know, the, in, you know, the child court bill, the marriage bill, which are supposed to have actually seen the light of day in Parliament so that then they can enhance uh, the well-being of children. That is not in, in, in has not happened. We have also seen opportunities that have been lost, you know, over the, over the years. In terms of uh, in 2016, five years ago, or four uh, plus years ago, uh, when we had a joint general elections and uh, the referendum. At that time, we were supposed to have had uh, an opportunity to expand the Bill of Rights so that uh, within those Bill of Rights, we were going to have very clear uh, provisions that accrue to children. One of the provisions was the provision of uh, free education from primary up to grade 12 level, secondary school level, enshrined in the Constitution. We would have seen within the Constitution the very strict uh, abolishment of child marriage would have seen within the Constitution the provision of children to enjoy a parental care, whether their parents were married or they were not married. But that opportunity was lost. And we were hoping that maybe due to those fears that parties you know, had, when, they, when the government is formed, because government is formed by currently, our, in, in our current system, is that the opposition and the ruling party are forming government because yes. the government is three wings of, of uh, in a, in, in has got three wings, mm. the executive, the judiciary, and the legislation. So we had thought the legislature was going to then say, guys, there are these issues that needed to be addressed. How do we bring them? But we, ne we never saw that. You, instead, we have seen a lot of energy on laws that are looking at uh, how do we either maintain being you know, uh, maintain the status quo of being uh, in power, or how do we get in power? Then we have seen people tussle around that. We have never seen people who have said, "There's this, this, you know, the child court bill that has taken so many years. Let it come back to, you know, to, you know, in back. In, uh, can it come to the floor of parliament so that we can then deliberate?" Yeah. Mm. You've talked about the bill not being enacted or not being passed. Mm. Uh, what sort of engagement? have you been having with, uh, first of all, the serving members of parliament? Because we know that next month, 
parliament will be dissolved. What sort of discussions or engagements have, have you been having with these members of parliament so that they can see need in passing this bill? No, there's been a lot of engagements uh, in uh, both uh, members of parliament as well as uh, uh, other policy makers. And uh, we have now some assurance that uh, that bill is going to, to, to come through even before you know, parliament is dissolved. And so to us that is, that is some, you know, something that gives us some bit of hope. But also to then say it is a, a collective issue. You can't just blame it on one, on one side. I think it's everyone to say why is it that the children issues are not brought to the fore? Mm. Then that falls on the agenda that individual political parties have. And that agenda should be enshrined within what these political parties have within their manifestos. And uh, I think uh, if you look at uh, 2016, very few political parties went in with manifestos. Others did not have manifestos. They, they may have had some pieces of papers that, uh, or whatever points here and there, but uh, there are very few that had. But now we are very excited to see that I think political parties are, are getting up coming up with, uh, with written uh, documentation that then shows that this is what we are going to be, to be held accountable for. And I have in mind uh, the, the United Party for National Development being the first, I think they need to be commended, they are the first to have launched their manifesto going into 2021 elections when we can then easily scrutinize and say, okay, what is it if they come, you know, they were, on a number of occasions, they've come very close to forming government. Mm. That then you can then begin to scrutinize them. When the Patriotic Front, who are the, the ruling party, launches their manifesto, we need also to, con to, to analyze them, review them based on that documentation that they have. You've talked about political parties going into an election without manifestos and uh, without availing these manifestos to the general public and organization like yours, which has got, you know, a heart for young people. Uh, even when you noticed and uh, realized that there are political parties that have got no focus or no message for children, what sort of engagement have you had with these political parties? If at all you've had, or if not, then what sort of plans do you mm -hmm. have to engage these people and try to ask them why they are not touching that importance to issues do, uh, that, that, that have got everything to do with children. Thanks very much, Kelvin. You see, 2016 elections were different. Because 2016 elections, we had uh, the conversation around the, the referendum. And there was uh, an opportunity to, to actually have a referendum that was going to allow for us to have the expanded Bill of Rights. And there were clear provisions there. So we were all happy to say, here is a grand opportunity that we'll have now these things as constitution issues. And we went round ourselves and other, in, in, you know, other NGOs, we went round the country campaigning for the yes vote in the referendum. Why? Because we saw that there was, a, there was very, very good and progressive uh, submissions within the, the, the constitution that was going to guarantee effective protection, development, and welfare of children from conception up to the age of 18. And so that gave us some hope, and we took, you know, we took part. When that failed, we didn't uh, set back. We began to engage uh, different you know, uh, players to say, can we now begin to look at how do we get back ourselves to having you know, such progressive laws. You can never leave the country in the hands of good people. Because human beings, they, can only, they have specific windows that they can look at. Because the, nation, the country is very big. There are a lot of issues that you need to focus on. And you may actually lose focus on that which is very critical. And like we have seen, people, you know, children are not usually considered. Why? Because they, they don't vote. Most people focus on those that are going to translate into votes. And when a child is considered, no one wants to pay attention. And yet the child is very, very critical. Kelvin, a child who was 13 years in 20, 
16. Uh, that child is now 18. You know, the child who was 16 years old in 2016, that child is 21. He's not a child, he's a man. Qualifies to go to parliament. The question we should be asking is, what have we stolen from this child by not having a had passed work together to pass the referendum so that then the Bill of Rights can be enhanced so that this child who would have been in grade 10, grade 9 can then access free education up to grade 12. We are talking of you know, grade 12 as minimum now because it will be a parliamentarian. So this, the former 16 year old cannot be a parliamentarian this year because just last, you know, five years ago, you denied this child a chance to access, you know, free education. You know? We are talking of a child who was uh, 13 or 14, and now they are 18 years. This is the person you're going to go to and say, can you come and vote for us? The one who was at 14 years, you are going to go back to them and say, come and vote for us today because they're 19 years old. In what state are they? Most of them are mothers now. Most of, the, of them are fathers now. Why? Because they were not protected. So it's very important that mm. we look at that. And so now going into these elections, because we don't have a referendum, we do not have an opportunity to talk about the Bill of Rights anymore. This time now we are looking, we are examining what the promise is. Forget about these, the so-called social contracts that the people bring and say, no, uh, maybe a few cutters sign and then, you know, no, we have a so, so, your social contract is a manifesto. And so you are not interested in uh, political parties or politicians coming with a social contract and sign it with you. You are not interested. What you are interested in is to see what is enshrined in their manifestos, isn't it? Uh, Kevin, we've had uh, different governments. We've had the UNIP government. Mm -hmm. We have the MMD. We have, we have now the Patriotic Front. Tell me, which one of these three different political parties who formed the government are running, you know, manage the country based on the, on, 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 on the so-called social contract? We hear them saying our policies are aligned to what? To the manifesto. Have they delivered? So if they have been claiming to say their policies are aligned to their manifestos, mm -hmm. we have heard different people. Mm -hmm. No, complaining and concluding to say political parties don't follow their manifestos when they form government. Yeah. The following the manifesto, I can tell you, you know, I haven't, the Patriotic Front is, is, is in government now. Mm. They have not developed the manifesto going forward. Uh, we are yet to see that. But I will just give you in, in, a, few, in a few snippets. If you remember, under the MMD, I think the previous government, when, other than the UNIP government where you had the, the, the welfare you know, arrangement, where we had the World Affair, whatever, there was some form of early childhood development. Under the MMD, that thing died. Within the Patriotic Front Manifesto of 20, I think 2011 to 2016 and 2016 to 2020, very clearly tabulated in terms of what they'll do for the children, for instance. And we've seen the issues of setting up within the government schools, there's early childhood development aspects. We've seen the issues of feeding continuing. We've seen issues of access to, to health and whatnot. Now, you would then begin to say, you see, when, if it is in the manifesto, it is going to be implemented. Implementation may be at varying degrees, but you see that, okay, this which was written here has come to pass. You know, mm -hmm. the worry now is when going forward, should, should this, the ruling part come up with a manifesto which does not mention anything about children, th then there will be a problem. Like the case is now, like I said, the United Party for National Development, for instance, which might be the government in waiting, they are the only ones we can talk about the manifesto going forward, is that they have launched their manifesto. If you look at their manifesto, the word child, the word child appears on one section. And it's a pedestrian appearance where it says, and girl children 
we will make sure that girl children access the same kind of education as the boy child. Mm. Nothing else. So the, the child, you have, you have not guaranteed the child's health when you form government. Should you form government? You have not guaranteed uh, this child's uh, antenatal you know, and postnatal care. You've not guaranteed health and nutrition. The first 1,000 days of a child is very, very important. You have not talked about that. You have not talked about early education for this child. You have not talked about the protection of this child. We, we have heard of defilement cases. We've heard of, of abductions. We've heard of children as young as five years being subjected to, to cattle heading. You've not talked about that. You've not talked about you know, access to, to education in a very clear manner. What is appearing in that, in, in, you know, in the in the document going forward, is that you want to, you are focusing more on people that have gone to college. Where, where are the people coming, going to college or university, coming from? They are coming from preschool. They are coming from primary school. They are coming from secondary schools. We have, we have not talked about it. So even as you, then if you are saying we are ready going forward, we are ready now. We are ready to. To, we are setting ourselves. You are setting yourselves to who? Are you setting yourselves to just those who are, who are able to vote? If you are setting yourself to those, the only those who are able to vote, do you really mean to say you've captured the right thing or you're just being populist? Why should uh, political parties have an agenda for children who are not eligible to vote? Thank you. Why should they focus their energies on Imagine. young people, on children, who are not eligible to vote, rather than focus their energies in setting their manifesto or their vision to people who are adults and eligible to vote. You are leaders because you want to manage the country. You are managing the country with the different you know, players in it. Children in Zambia below the age of 18 constitute 53%. Over half of the population of this country is children below 18. I just told you, Kelvin, to say, if you did not pay attention to children in the last election, those people you are, comp you, are, you are busy saying, go and register to vote, were children just the year before. They were 17 years old that, 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 just the other year. They turned 18 this year. These are the children who, within a short space, every day, there is somebody who's graduating from being a child to being an adult. If you do not invest in this child, who are the majority? You are talking of a future of hoodrums, a future of destitutes. So you need to invest. The right time to invest for 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 the future is today. We have been and told that, that, that children future. cannot make their decision and parents will, or, uh, and guardians will be there to guide and make decisions on behalf of their children. Mm. Why can't political parties and those that aspire for public office focus their energies in speaking to these parents and guardians so that they can make decisions on behalf of the children rather than having a focus on them? I like that. So. In the same vein, would we say the parent is going to go to school on behalf of the child because the child cannot make decisions on, the, on, on their own? The child cannot make a decision on what one plus one is, so the, ch the father should actually be the one in class. Eh? The child is too young, cannot be subjected to having an injection. The, fa the mother or the father should be injected on their behalf. No, it doesn't work like that. You need to provide a service to this particular child. Our constitution in part three says life begins at conception. Mm. So what is it that we should do to make sure that this life that has been conceived is able to grow and become a fully a healthy, bouncing baby who is going to be you know, a, a, a mature youth, who is going to be a good leader in future. You need to invest, and that investment is not just by the way. It's not as pedestrian as we have seen in, in, in the documents that have started coming out now. It is not. And that to us is very, very worrying. Because you see, things, if, if people claim that things are not okay, I, what are you riding on? 
are people riding on explaining the, the sufferings of the people or people are riding on providing solutions and uh, like I've told you currently I can't talk about what I have not seen because we are in an election year mm -hmm. we are examining people based on what they'll be saying in this year's election so I can't talk of what I've not seen I have not seen we, we, we are talking of the two political parties because these are major contenders these are the people that would you know form you know government tomorrow you know in the next five months we are going to have a new government when you say you're focusing on the two political parties we have seen political parties entering into alliances mm -hmm. meaning that even the so-called for lack of better terms small political parties are also buying into or selling their manifestos into these bigger political parties right now the pf are in government mm -hmm. and there are political parties that are in an alliance with them mm -hmm. like cdp mm -hmm. like zrp they're in an alliance mm -hmm. why can't you also focus on small small political parties that have seemingly sold their manifesto to these big political parties yeah it's interesting you know we for us any anyone can become but we know in the last if you if we measure the last uh, two elections the, the battle has been between the two and so even if you had alliance will come i think like we know that there's an alliance now which is even called by another political party name mm. so it's not anything it's not the blue it's not whatever alliance, but it's by the party name so which means you are actually buying in you are aligning yourself with the, this movement and what it stands for and so when that movement and what it stands for then we begin to examine to say, okay what is your view what is your take on the children who in most cases are not able to speak for themselves what is your take what is it that you're offering that's why we you know we're focusing like that and so we then begin to examine and say what what what, what exactly is it that people that are supposed to to say yes i'm going in you know with this person they're actually focusing on and currently i've told you to say we've not seen a very clear a uh, roadmap from what has already been presented so far there's zero there's actually for you know you know for me personally it's actually zero it's, in, 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 it's actually zero out of ten you, you yeah. zero out of ten uh, then mr ngoma are you able to tell us that um, according to your organization and what you anticipate to see or what you want to see from these political parties is there a benchmark to say these political parties should start talking about children at this age up to this age you've talked about life beginning at conception mm -hmm. are you then suggesting that political parties should start talking about the plans they have for that baby or that child who has been you know conceived up to maybe when that child will graduate from being a child to another you know what we want to see is uh, is a very clear you know commitment like and, and i gave you an example to say in you know this is unless we want to start analyzing you know where we're coming from in terms of the last five years but we wanted to focus on going forward in terms of the next but we have seen that there there has been a very clear you know political party that have set out very clear to say this is what we want to you know to do for the children and then they've moved into you know we have now had this period and then we are able to say okay that happened that did not happen what we want to see clearly is can you have a very clear roadmap to say this is what we are going to do in terms of maternal health this is what we are going to do in terms of child health this is what we are going to do in terms of uh, the the protection of these children this is what we are going to do in terms of allowing for children participation this is what we are going to do in terms of children's education you know so that then it's very clear you can then be measured against those things but currently we are not seeing those things a apart from the issues to do with education we know that um, year in year out or in an election year we have heard and you have seen political parties talking about education mm. and when I when I look at education I know that children are catered for we have heard the issues to do with health mm. and issues to do with protecting a child mm. for me I'm thinking only three are there any other sectors or programs that political parties 
who talk about, apart from them talking about education, free education, we have heard political parties saying we'll provide free education from child from grade one or early childhood up to grade 12. We have heard others talking about no children will be protected when they, they are taken to hospitals, they will receive the best health care that they, they deserve. We have heard others talking about, you know, ending child labor. Are there any other things you that see. Mr. Ngoma you <laughs> talk about, say, yeah. apart from these, we also want them to focus on ABCD. Let's take, for instance, uh, so you are talking of free education. Who are you going to provide free education to? Where are they? Birth, birth registration in Zambia is around 14% or so. Children were registered. How do you plan for children you don't know? If you all, the only ones that you know are for, is 14% of the population. So birth is such from such things. How many mothers are giving birth in facilities? Yes, there, there, there has been an increase for those. I think we were standing at 78, which is a huge jump from about 40-something percent just a few years ago to 78 percent, which, which then tells you to say there has been investment in, 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 you know, in, in the area of child, you know, uh, child welfare and development. To say, yes, there was people who had an agenda who said we cannot continue to have only 38 percent of mothers giving birth in facilities. Let us begin to develop this. We, you know, the issues of um, uh, uh, immunization, for instance. How many pregnant mothers are able to get a tetanus uh, injection so that they can prevent uh, the children from getting it? You know? And so it starts from there. It's not just about saying uh, education and whatnot. We are talking of health, nutrition. There is a very clear link between nutrition and uh, intelligence. How many children are stunting? How are you taking care of the first very critical in, in, in formation years when the baby, when the human being's brain is, you know, is developing and developing at a very fast rate between, you know, within the 1,000, you know, in, in, in a days from birth to about two years old? We need to see those things very clearly articulated, not just statements like you, like you stated, free, whatever. But tell us how that is going to happen. I can tell you to say there is no political party in Zambia that is committing to provide free education. Zero. Mm. Yeah. There is no political party. Are those just pronounced? There is no political party. I will tell you, the UPND says when they talk, they say they will provide free education, right? Mm. Let's look at them and first. I have it. They produced this thing on Friday. Yes. What are they saying on education? They are saying, reform the bursary and student loan system so that students who cannot afford to pay school fees, who cannot do what? Afford. afford. To pay. They have not said free. Afford to pay means there will be payment. But if you don't, if you can't afford to pay, uh, or you can take up their places, <laughs> have you said you are going to provide something? If those who can't afford to pay, they will take up their pay. What does that even mean? You see? So are we talking, are we saying something just to, to whip people's emotions and, and invite them to, to allow us when without intentions? It's black and white. This is something that people were dancing to and they were, they, they were launching. There's no free education here. And where is it? It's talking about university. He's not talking about primary school. 2016, the, the, the referendum failed, Kelvin. Why did it fail? When it had enshrined in the Constitution free primary and secondary education, not university, free primary and secondary, you know, I think we'd have seen those that say, let's provide education opportunities for being the ones to champion. They didn't champion that. It then tells you that underneath people were actually saying, we don't, this is not what we believe, this is what we tell people. They say the devil is in the detail. The devil is in the detail. Nelson Mandela once said that, you know, in, in, you know, in New York, when at the UN General Assembly for, on children, 
in 20, I think 2002, 2003, that uh, history will judge us based on how we, we, we care for our children, how we can protect our children. How is history judging these politicians who they say something, but they don't mean it? Now, now, now that you've mentioned the issue of, uh, of protection, of protecting children, issues to do with labor, it is something that uh, has become like a thorny issue. I know mm. that you talked about children looking after, you know, animals mm. or cattles. Issues to do with child labor, there are families up to now, be it here in the urban or rural setups, where children begin to fend for themselves at a tender age. Mm. Is this a concern to you? If it is a concern to you, what sort of programs or approach or proposals are you bringing on the table to ensure that those that are in government and those that plan to be in government focus on in order for us as a nation to reduce on the issues of child labor? You see, when you talk about child labor, it's not just cattle heading. We've seen mining activities, mm. and we see children actually being used in mining activities. Again, it is what kind of laws are we going to put in place that are going to say we are going to transform because it's about growing. People, everyone is talking of growing the economy. Mm. We're going to grow the economy. While it's doing so, we'll make sure that the children are protected. We have not seen that. There's, there's mention in terms Don't you think children also have got a, a, a role to play in growing our economy? So if we are to ex children. exclude them, or, or, or if we are to come up with a policy and say we cannot use children, then um, it will take years for us to I, grow the economy. I, I, I would want to be educated now the children uh, have a role to play in, it, you know, in, in growing the economy at the, in, in at a given in, in, you know, instance. Children have a role to play in sustaining the growth of the economy. That I would agree with you in the sense that if we invest in this child, in the child's health, in the child's protection, in the child's uh, access to quality education, in the child's uh, uh, development, this child would be able to take the place of others and bring in fresh ideas, fresh energies in terms of growing the economy. Yes, they would. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen if we are going to just say a child who's in grade two can drop out of school because they are small enough to get through the tunnels of a mine, that the child can, can easily work in a cotton field with, the, with no pay but just giving them food, that the child can, can be used to sell uh, anything at the market because, you know, no one, you know, the child won't feel embarrassed. What else are you taking out? What are you stealing from this child? You're stealing the child's, you know, future. And so then how are they growing that economy? And whose economy are they growing? Let's talk about issues of um, child marriages. Mm. It is also something that is a thorn issue, and the president, when he was addressing the nation through parliament, he did hint to this fact that um, this issue has continued, and that is why government came up with their first track courts mm. to convict those parents who are in the habit of marrying off uh, children at a tender age. Uh, are you happy so far with the strides that we've made as a nation in ending child marriages? Or if not, what is it that we need to do if the current government and other partners are not doing enough? One thing that is uh, for certain, I think uh, Zambia has done quite well in that front, and the government has, you know, can, needs to be commended, especially the president. The president himself has been leading in the front, in the area of... Uh, fight against child marriage. As you may be aware, the president has been honored at the uh, AU you know, level as uh, you know, uh, the champion. You know, we have had a lot of initiative. We have a plan you know, in Zambia on, uh, you know, uh, in, in addressing child marriage. We have different consortia in place that are looking at uh, issues of you know, child marriage. We've seen how you know, you know, uh, religious leaders, uh, traditional leaders have been rallied to actually address you know, these issues. However, the issue of child marriage has got also other issues that are you know, you know, linked with them, in, in, you know, with them in terms of uh, in, in, in fighting it. Because you are talking of the economy. If the parents do not have the means, for instance, 
to look after the children. When the child cannot go to school, when the child is not going to school, then what happens? You find that there's opportunities for them to get married. Uh, school places. We have done very well as a country in terms of having primary you know, school you know, places. But when you come to secondary school places, there are very few. And so some children, they may even pass, but they can't access secondary school places. And when they drop out of secondary school places, the hopelessness comes in. And these, you know, to, to some extent, child marriage issues come in, 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 comes in. So we are doing very well. But again, we are saying, can we see these clearly articulated? And I can say, you know, like, uh, you know, again, when we refer to uh, with the, you know, uh, the, the, the manifesto, the only manifesto that we have going you know, forward, I think they've mentioned, although it's in passing, they've mentioned that uh, they, would, you know, they would deal with the issues of those that are, are you know, affecting children's education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, and uh, one of the things that they cite is issues to do with child marriage as an issue that is affecting you know, children to continue with their education, you know, menstrual, you know, hygiene issues as part of the issues that are you know, affecting girls and not bring them at par with the, with, with, with the boy child. But there's the whole issue about access. How much are you investing in terms of, how much are you promising in terms of school places closer to where these children are? And how much will it cost me to access that particular? You, know, you are happy with the strides that we've made. Now, let, let's talk about the issue of child deferment. Mm -hmm. There are others that are suggesting that, okay, government has come up with these fast track courts to convict parents and guardians when, who have that habit of marrying off children at a tender age. But when it comes to issues of deferment, we have seen people appearing before the courts of law for months and years mm -hmm. before they are convicted. Don't you think it is high time that we come up with a fast track court in order to convict those that are defying children? You know, it's a, I, I think issues to do with the sexual, gender-based violence, they are, they, are, they are complex. Yes, we need to have fast track, you know, our mechanisms, but also we need to start having, you know, uh, systems that, uh, that are able to prevent some of these issues from happening. And I'm glad that we now have the Cyber uh, Security Act in place that are able to actually deal with the, the, proce the process before it actually happens. When you start luring girls, people now are using these phones to start luring these you know, young girls to say, you know, can we meet, or young boys, can we meet here, and what, what. That can actually be used to, you know, to, you know, to deal with such kind of cases that could, would have actually degenerated into, into uh, a development you know, in, in a you know, case. We need to also have, I think there's been some, some progress made in terms of the standardization of, of sentencing. That uh, you can sentence, you know, the sentence for somebody who's appearing in court in District A and the other one who's appearing in court in District B, the sentencing is about the same. Because now the commission of, you know, you know the sentencing is happening at, at a higher court level, not uh, at a lower court level which is in, in, in a very progressive. We have also seen some progressive issues in terms of the villages, because what was happening, when you are taken to a traditional court, the charge of deferment would be, you know, bring a chicken, bring a goat, if it's worse, bring a cow. I think we've seen uh, uh, traditional leaders now are saying, no, no more. Now, deferment cases or whatever, we're not going to have them sorted out by, by just submitting, you know, you know, you know, giving a cow or, or you know, a goat. That's ve that, that is very progressive. So we need maybe to, to start looking at quickening the process of harmonization of how the customary law is, is deliberated with the, the, in, you know, the other, the other form of law so that then there's, there's standardization in terms of the, the traditional leaders can be can be helped in terms of orientations and whatnot, supported so that they start adjudicating and passing judgment, which are almost similar to, to the other forms of. This is Wednesday's edition of the special interview. And my guest on the program is uh, Kelvin Ngoma, who is uh, uh, a country director for Regional Psychosocial Support Initiative, REPSI, and we are talking about children and elections. You'll be coming through on the number 0764-250055. The number again is 0764250055. In case you've got a question for my guest, Mr. Ngoma, you can come through by dialing that number and pose a question to Mr. Ngoma. We'll be able to respond to the, your question or your concerns that you have. You've, you've, you've talked about the cyber, which is now the cyber law, 
and uh, we are told that it is meant to, pro to provide child online protection. Others have argued that children are already protected. There is nothing like we need to protect these children unless there is something that government is hiding. Your take on the passing and now it is law, uh, the cyber is, it was now enacted and assented to, we have a law that deals with cyber issues. So those that are saying we have enough, haven't they seen you know, cases of, uh, of children uh, in, in, in of deformment going, you know, going up? Haven't they heard of uh, sex parties and children you know, organizing, mobilizing themselves or being mobilized through you know, using of the cyber you know, uh, you know, mechanisms? Have they not heard of sextortion? Have they not heard of, uh, of uh, you know, children being you know, lured into you know, uh, the sex uh, industry through, you know, through Facebook, WhatsApp, and whatnot? Haven't they heard that? And so when they say there's enough, those, which ones? At what point have we then said, no, this is enough? What, you know, the problem that is there is, like I said earlier, every time laws are passed, we look at the name. What is it that they, this thing is coming to do to me? What is it coming to do to my supporters? Are we happy with the level of toxicity that is there where people, instead of engaging in a civilized manner, if, you've, if you have an, a, a line of argument, I have my line of argument, why can't I just counter your argument than being personal, than being insulting to you? Why am I that weak that I should be insulting? I think we've seen women being insulted openly. Children, you know, now children, they have access to the phones. Why? Because we have e-learning, we have all sorts of things. You can't prevent them from having, you know, uh, in, in access to the phones and whatnot. But we've seen people being harassed. We've seen people being coerced. We've seen people being lured into, you know, coached into, you know, uh, vices that could be inimical to their well-being. Can we then say this law is for those that are in the urban and not for those that are in the rural setup? Because we are told that this issue or the issue of Internet, Facebook and WhatsApp, Children in the rural parts have got nothing to do with it. They don't even know about it. Can we now say we have got this law mm. that is targeting children that are found in the urban and not those that are in the village? No, Kelvin. You know, I'm, I'm actually shocked because the government rolled out telecommunication towers throughout the country. And we have been told that, that there are pupils in grade 9 no. who are writing ICT no. without even seeing a computer. No, 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 but who says that uh, because I have no computer, how many of us have got computers in homes and yet we have access to Facebook? How many? The Chinese phones, these are cheaper phones from Singapore, from wherever, which cost far less than, uh, that, 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 than a loaf of bread. How are farmers able to, to get an uh, e-voucher? In the far flung areas, we are told they swipe. Swipe what? They, they, if it's e voucher, mm. it means it's electronic. Mm. How, how is it accessible? It's because there's access to elect, in, you know, in a, in a, in a electronic signal, which simply means children are able to access this. Let us not always think a village is as it were maybe when we were young. The village is there, there's now opened up. We work in villages. Mm. One of the first things that we saw, even where there are no proper roads, towers are there. People are able to access these things. And surely, where there is technology like that, you should have appropriate laws to safeguard the people. Should we wait until these things affect us, affect our children? Then that's when we say, how I wish there was a law. No, we should, I, I don't think we should be doing things like that. So this claim to say, the, the villages are not, they are not, the villages are well linked. That I can actually speak, because mm. we work in villages. We have never been to any village where I have not moved to a, a few meters and found signal for, for, for phones and whatnot. People having these, there's well link, you know, there's a, a very clear link now, I think, with all these things. I know sometimes we trivialize some things that have happened, like the linking of having all these road networks and whatnot. 
the country is getting linked. Access, those things that we say, no, you can't find them here, you can't find, I, it's how the cells are got, it's how the cells are chicken. They're able to get, uh, to, 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 to get themselves a phone. If their school does not have computers, let us not say they cannot have, you know, a phone, you know, in, in a phone facility. We run radio stations, you know, ra you know, radio programs in these places and people are able to, con to, 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 to contribute via WhatsApp lines and whatnot from villages. And so that cyber, you know, you know, it actually works. And it, I think it's even much, it's even better for the villager because the villager can easily be told to say, I'm taking you to Lusaka where you are going to access the school and what else. But because now they, they know to say, mm, let's make, I need to question if a person is saying, can we go together to Lusaka? I need to question, what is there? Do you have a transfer? Have you found a place for me? Where is the school? Let me s send me some documents. Or you send them on WhatsApp. Now you can do that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, what role can children play during elections to enhance patriotism at a tender age? If at all there is an age that you can say, okay, at this age, a child can play uh, a role, or no, we can start at this age. Uh, I'm happy that you've asked me that. And I know that movie TV is one of the pioneer uh, television stations of involving children in broadcasting. Very young children. You have this, TV, this, this, this uh, television station should be very, very proud of itself, of having developed some of, you know, one of, you know, among many fine brains of young, you know, young people who were here, who started, I was watching these young people, very young, presenting the ideas, not being coached, but coming from them, they research, they are able to articulate. So children are able to articulate. They are able, they know what is affecting them. They know how to put it across. And these, some of the children that you groomed here at this station, they have, they are very strategic places. Others are representing this country in, you know, at different levels, you know, in, in, in a global. So children have got a play, in, in, in have got a place. And they don't need another person to speak for them. How are we consulting them? How are we engaging them? We had the, a competition, I think it was televised, which was the junior president. Those were not old men and women. Those were young children. And you, you asked a very good question. How can they embrace this coexistence? We saw these children coming from all over the country, debating ideas. They were not saying, you are tall, you are dark, you are whatever. No, they were saying, this is what I stand for, and this is how I would do it when, when you elect me. When they were, when they were not voted and they lost, we never saw anyone beat another person. No, they coexisted. They argue, they battle it out, but when they're out there, they're shaking hands. There's something our political leaders can learn from. When the final, I think the final one, uh, won, the one who won the, the, pres the presidency, who did that person choose? to be the vice, the one who lost after. And the one who lost did not say, no, you, you cheated, so I don't want to work with you. No, no, says, I humbly and I'm honored and I accept that. There's something that we can learn from these children. Because our children now are exposed to issues that you can actually debate and differ on opinions. That does not make you my enemy. When I say, no, what you're thinking of is not uh, in line with what I'm thinking of. It doesn't necessarily mean. Mr. Ngoma, you've mentioned the issue of, uh, you know, children embracing each other, despite them, you know, differing in terms of ideas and visions. Uh, what is the impact of violence on children during elections? I still remember what happened in Tendere mm. when um, there were campaigns and a bus of an empty political party was attacked by cadres. And we could see children running up and down, mm. hiding. And even when we experience violence, we also see the police coming in with tear gas canisters, mm. and tear gas is fired in all uh, mm. direction. What is the impact? Mm -hmm. Or what sort of impact does it have on children? No, it does. It does. You know, uh, children are just innocent. Children play. You know, one of the things that, uh, that are there, you find that. Uh, even when there is uh, 
even when there's an outbreak of, say, these diseases, cholera, we are talking of COVID, you still see children going around, mm -hmm. you know, playing. And so children do not have a sense that uh, these are my enemies. Mm. And so you find, because if we become violent, the ease, the, when you throw a stone, it's most likely going to fall on a child and not any other person. Because children are free. That's how they, 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 they exist. They don't know these different you know, divisions that are there. So children are at a huge risk. Children cannot fight back, unfortunately. But children can easily be swayed to say, you know, we'll give you some sweet, you go and destabilize that group or go and put this thing, you know. We have also seen it, another form, I don't know whether it's violence, but it's, it's a very dangerous trend. When campaigns start, every political party wants to show that they are the biggest crowd. What do, we, do they do? They send out trucks, they send out buses to start ferrying people to come to a place where the rally is going to be. And who jump onto those things without, without thinking? It's the children. Do we, do, have we ever seen a political party that takes a roll call to say, we'll take a list of, of, of children we have carried? No. And then you come and dump them in Mtendere when you pick them from Ch Ch Chelanga, you know, Chewombo, uh, Materu. When the rally is over, who, who has the patience? Those drivers that you've, you know, you've hired, they just want to, to fail whoever is available and go. Then we see them, you know, some... Mr. Children. Gomba, let's uh, engage the people that are watching us. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you, sir? Very fine, sir. Tell us your name and where you're calling us from. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Moba. I'm calling from Kerem District. Yes, sir. Um, I have Mr. Ngoma and we are discussing children and elections. Please go ahead and uh, make your contribution. Yes, sir. I'm in Kerem District, so I need to join your party, sir. He's not a politician. <laughs> Yes, he's not a politician. He's the country director for Regional Psychosocial Support Initiative, REPSI. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I thought that this is uh, the politician so that... Uh, so I that you join his political party. Thank no, you but, so much, sir. But you can join the movement of making sure that the children are protected. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. Mr. Ngoma, it's better you form your political party. <laughs> Members, uh, already you've got one. A member from Ikerengi. The town of Pineapples. Uh, 0764250055. We are discussing uh, children and elections. And my guest is uh, Mr. Kelvin Ngoma, who is the, uh, the country director for Regional Psychosocial Support Initiative, REPSI. If you've got a contribution or a question uh, to ask, Mr. Ngoma is here to respond to those, uh, you know, concerns or questions in regards to the topic of discussion, which is children and elections. Uh, Mr. Ngoma, let's talk about uh, issues to do with uh, uh, psychosocial. Mm -hmm. Who should take the lead in providing additional psychosocial support for children during the run-up to elections? You've mentioned that yeah. others Thanks. have been ferried. You find mm -hmm. that a child has been ferried mm -hmm. from Tendere to maybe Matero or Lilanda. Who should then uh, lead in providing psychosocial I think it's, uh, it's everyone's responsibility, and especially the, the, the convenience of, uh, of these uh, you know, engagements. Remember that these, these are your children. These are the certain people that you'd want to, you know, you are saying you have a, you have a plan for, you have an agenda for. Mm. And so we would want to see it very clear. It's clearly tabulated because even when we're deploying people who are organizing these events and so on, there's somebody who's a leader. And it's, it, it's up to everyone to actually say. Let me just hold you there. It's up to everyone. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Shani. How are you? I'm here, Mr. Shani. I'm here. 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 I'm here.
to a daughter of Mushtar. That is uh, Mr. Mushtala, all the way from uh, Solwezi, northwestern province, talking about um, us as a country, as a nation, following what is enshrined in our constitution. And uh, you talked, uh, you, I, I know that you talked about the issue of um, the contracts that, uh, you know, political parties will just sign, mm -hmm. but uh, they don't uh, follow. M maybe you want to react to Mr. Mushtala. Mm. I think oh, before you react, yeah. maybe let, let's speak with Sarah, or you can just uh, hold your thoughts. Hello, good evening. Hello? Uh, th hello? Issues to do with uh, yeah. <laughs> children <laughs> and elections, and uh, <laughs> maybe a parent and was child, calling, and the child just caught. Yeah, a child. Uh, <laughs> uh, couldn't uh, allow the parent to speak because this is uh, their program. We are discussing uh, issues that have got a direct uh, link to them and uh, the issues to do with uh, fighting for the phone with, with the child. 0764250055 is the number. 0764250055 is the number. And we are discussing children and elections. Uh, if you've got uh, a, a concern or a query, uh, my guest, uh, Mr. Ngom, will be able to respond. Hello, good evening. Hello? 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 Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Your name, sir, and where are you calling us from? Yeah, this is Mutale Gift calling from Kasempa, Northwestern Province. Mr. Mutale, uh, Mr. Ngoma is my guest. If you've got a concern or a question, you can pause. Yes. What is Mr. Mutale Gift? Mr. Mutale. Gift him to Can you just reduce the volume on your TV set and go ahead and make your contribution? Okay. I've done that already, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. I, I write the, the program and um, I'm very much excited. Thank you. Now, the, my question is the, I want to ask a question to Mr. Ngoma. Mm. Yes. Why is it that? Thank you so much, Mr. Mtwale. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, the phone line is off for now, and I uh, will allow Mr., uh, my guest, Mr. Ngoma, to respond to the two uh, you know, concerns, uh, one coming from Mr. Mushtar and the other one coming, coming from Mr. Mtwale. Yeah. Uh, in terms of respect for the laws, I think what we need to do is that, uh, you know, the government is, is, you know, is comprises three, three arms, the legislature, the judiciary and the executive. Mm. We need to see each one of these very, you know, strengthened. We need to see minimal uh, uh, inter interference, if any, you know. And this interference needs to be clear, even before uh, people form, uh, you know, government. You know, sometimes we we want to to to, to, to appear shocked. You know, when it's actually supposed to be a standard thing to say, how are these people behaving even before they form government? Are they interfering with the, you know, the, 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 the operation of the other? In terms of why don't they fulfill their manifestos? That's why we say the devil is in the detail. Don't get excited with what is called the contract, which is not a manifesto. Read their manifestos, then you'll see. A manifesto should be very clear to say, for us, when we come, we know the number of people who are supposed to be in school. Mm. They are 2 million or they are 200,000. And we'll build so many schools so that they can, you know, you know take on all, all these people. Are we not surprised to see that the first uh, Zambian government or whatever it is, they were able to build infrastructure that have remained the same so many years after independence, but they were so big, bigger than the sizes of the population population that was there then. And what has been coming on is that people don't build like that. Look at the, the, the sizes of plots, even schools. Look at the school and the size of the plot that it was given. Look at the plots that are given you know, now for schools, 40 by 40. 
when back then it was two hectares for a primary school. Why? Because there was also thinking, say, as the population grows, we'll grow this school so that it can, uh, and it can allow. So you check what people promise you on the documents that they've given you. If the document is shallow, if a document is full of slogans, just know to say these have failed before they even take off. Mr. Ngoma, thank you so much for making an appearance on uh, Wednesday's edition of uh, uh, the program. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, And wishing you all the best as you continue to champion or standing on behalf and speaking on behalf of uh, the children in this country. Thank you very Let's much. Let's hope now for this political Yeah, we just hope so. <laughs> My name is Kelvin Tabula, Chief for Colander, me chatting with uh, Mr. Kelvin Ngoma, who is uh, the country director for Regional Psychosocial Support Initiative, REPSI. Many thanks to Mavuto Piri and uh, Cedric Sinkonjera Jr., who have been my producers and directors of uh, this program. Until next time, good night.